I think what a lot of people tend, I think it's just all comes down to efficiency. And a lot of people tend to look at extra special techniques or different techniques. And they think, okay, that's the missing thing in my training. And that's going to get me better. Whereas actually like just getting better is already sets you ahead of most people. Most people are going in the gym and they're doing the same old, same old, or they're not even in the gym and they're slowly getting worse. The fact that you, you can make improvement it is a really good thing. So keep doing things that keep improving you and slowly over the, you know, over the months, over the years, add in extra things to keep that, you know, to keep that graph going up in the, in the direction that you want it to go to keep you improving. Because at the end of the day, if, if you can get better, just doing a few lifts, just do those few lifts and then, you know, save your other, you, you've got then extra time for recovery or extra time to work on your skills. Like there's no point pumping up already pumped up tires. There's no point doing any, anything more than that. And also like, you know, um, it doesn't even have to be as complicated as people make out either. So training efficiency for me is, okay, I'm going to do upper body today, right? So I want something powerful. So I'm going to say, let's say I'm going to do a, let's say a med ball throw against the wall, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to pair that with a core exercise because that's what I like to do. And it's, if you give people core exercise at the end of their workouts or, the, or ab exercise, we're going to call them, they won't do them because they'd rather go home. So you, put them, you pair them with the power exercise, as long as it's not, you know, a, a strength speed stimulus, and it's a legitimate speed strength or power stimulus, which is going to be affected by the core fatigue. So let's just say we've thrown the med ball into the wall, and then we do a long lever, stir the pot with the med ball. We've used the med ball again. So that's efficiency, right? So then you you go, right, okay, my, my main lift today is going to be the bench. I've got to do four sets of five, let's say, at 80%, right? If you're a percent worker, RP, six or seven, whatever it is. You do your sets, you finish up. What do you do? You don't need to walk to the other side of the gym and go to a lat pull down. You know, you pair then something like a floor press with a chin up because it's right there. You don't have to deload the bar. You don't have to just take a couple of weights off. And then you walk across to the dumbbell rack and you do like some vertical pressing and you do some horizontal pulling with like a, a bench row. So again, you're being efficient. You're pairing exercises that are really quick, back to back, bosh, bosh. You know, walking from one end of the gym or upstairs, downstairs, you're just doing the stuff right there. Mm -hmm. And that's where program design fails when it's so complicated. You know, I've got a rule of thumb. If I, if, you know, if, if, if I look at your program and it's more than, depending on goal, obviously, but more than eight exercises, and I'm being generous there because mine usually about six, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you don't know what you're doing. And there's, there's always this caveats to that as well. You know, we do different, different uh, modalities of, you know, mobilizations or whatever it is, you know, it's, but the, the, the meat and potatoes of the, of the workout, if it's 10 to 12 exercises, me, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I think that comes from the same psyche that gives people or that makes people do advanced techniques because they feel like they're missing out on something. And so yeah. I'll always see that with people that when they'll send me their program or we'll do a consultation and I'll say like, no, you, you don't need this much. And they're, they're completely scared of, I, I know this, I, I have the same, I, I can completely understand the mindset because I was the same, you know, you think, oh, if I, if I only do two sets of bench, there's no way I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get weaker. My chest is going to shrivel up. I used to be petrified and because, you know, that's just the way the fitness industry is because it's all so ingrained at, with these top notch athletes promoting all this nonsense. And the third group right, third group of right people. And he's got a, a 140 bench, 150 bench press, and he weighs like 100 kilograms. Let's just say it's 150 kilogram bench press. Well, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next few weeks, he could come into the gym, work up to a heavy single, which is around about that weight, and he's maintaining his strength. And when his strength starts to deteriorate, then we can add a few reps to that, that, that yep. particular X. It's, it's really fucking simple, and it's, not, it's nowhere near as complex as people like to make out. I think people get also get wrapped into their own results emotionally and they don't like, they don't like the idea of what do you mean? I only have to do, you know, two sets of bench. Like no way. I, I you know, cause they like, cause we like what we're already good at. And so therefore yeah. we're going to keep doing what we're already good at. Well, if that's, if that's like already good enough and you're putting, you're investing time into that, that is much better spent elsewhere then you're actually wasting your time. Well, look, like my, my mindset changed on direct calf training a few years ago. So I never believed in direct calf training. I always thought if you were doing enough sprint work and Mac drills and mm -hmm. pogo, enough stimulus, and you didn't need it. Then I started like looking at Alex Natera's work and I'm like, 
uh, okay, maybe there's some valid validity to this. Then I started utilizing those techniques in my own training and realized, ah, I feel like my ankle stiffness has gone through the roof. It was actually, it, it deteriorated quite a lot. I just hadn't felt it. And I videoed myself doing like you know, three point starts and the first step, you know, the car, the, the ankle is, is stiff, it's holding, the heel is holding it tight. Whereas before it wasn't. So you know, my mind, mind has changed a lot on different training modalities over the years. You just got to keep on challenging yourself and not, like I said, leaning towards your biases. Oh, 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 oh